Australia has a long and dark history of taking advantage of women for the purpose of prostitution. Of the convicts transported here between 1788 and 1852, about 24,000 were women, one in seven. The vast majority of female convicts, more than 80% of them, were convicted of petty theft. Any crime of violence was very low among them and it's quite certain that no women were transported for prostitution as it was never a transportable offence. And yet there is rarely a comment on colonial society, scarcely a passage of government evidence, hardly even a diary entry or a letter home that missed the chance to describe the worthlessness and degenerate nature of women convicts in Australia. Now this opinion was shared by military officers, doctors, judges, governors and their wives, but it led to the women convicts being seen as sex objects for the men. It was out of desperation, not inclination. And that remains the case today. Prostitution is primarily the result of a lack of choice among the most marginalised, vulnerable and defenceless people in the world, including Australia. In addition to poverty, a prior history of childhood physical or sexual abuse is commonplace amongst prostituted people. In fact, it's extremely rare to find someone in prostitution who has not suffered from abuse. Now, I've had the privilege of working alongside brave survivors of prostitution as they advocate on behalf of others from their own dark experience. People like Ali Marie. So I am Ali Marie Diamond and I am the co-founder of Wahini Toa Rising. Wahini Toa Rising means Warrior Women Rising and we are a collective of survivors from both Australia and New Zealand and we fully support Nicola moving forward as we fight for the Equality Bill. This week, a bill has been introduced in the South Australian Parliament which will go a long way towards protecting women who find themselves involved in prostitution through desperation. The bill is modelled on the Nordic prostitution legislation which criminalises the buying of sex and pimps and most importantly, it provides meaningful exit strategies for prostituted people. This form of prostitution legislation is recommended by the European Union and it currently operates in many other nations with strong results in stopping trafficking. The fact that South Australia is the first state in Australia to be considering this pro-woman model is not surprising. South Australia has led the way in women's rights in our nation. When the University of Adelaide was founded in 1876, women were admitted to study and the South Australian government insisted on passing legislation allowing women to take degrees against the wishes of the British government. Education for girls has always been strongly supported in South Australia, with the first Australian public secondary school being the Advanced School for Girls in Adelaide. In 1894, South Australia was the first colony in Australia and only the fourth place in the world where most women were allowed to vote. In doing so, they became the first polity in the world to grant equal political rights to both men and women, not only allowing them to vote, but also to stand for Parliament. And it is now one of those South Australian parliamentarians, Nicola Centafanti, who has introduced this new prostitution reform bill. Thank you, Mr President. Uh, I move notice of motion, private business number 10, standing in my name, namely that I have leave to introduce a bill for an act to amend the Summary Offences Act 1953 and to make related amendments to the Criminal Law Consolidation Act 1935. And that's seconded. I'll put the question. Those for the question say aye. Can't say no, the eyes have it. I'm here this morning and I'm joined by Ali Marie Diamond. She's flown down to South Australia uh, to be here as I introduce my partial decriminalisation bill for prostitution reform. Um, this is a bill uh, which is really about women's equality. Uh, it's about saying uh, to buyers, to men, uh, that we will not be a commodity, uh, we will not be something uh, or someone who can be bought and sold. Uh, and this is about uh, ensuring that there's support services in place uh, for these uh, vulnerable women uh, who need to exit uh, the industry. Support services such as accommodation, uh, such as employment opportunities and drug and alcohol rehabilitation. Uh, Ali, Marie, thank you for joining me. Encouragingly, this is not a partisan concept. There is a history of parliamentarians on both sides of parliament who have been working on this project for many years in the likeness of William Wilberforce. These brave members of parliament have our support, as do members of parliament in every state around Australia who are advocating for similar laws 
that provide justice for those who have no voice. Wherever you are in Australia, human trafficking is being fed by legalised prostitution. The legislation being proposed in South Australia offers an escape to those caught up in the darkest of places, bringing light into darkness. That's what Jesus called us to do. He called us to be the light of the world as we reflect his light, his love. Please join us. Please pray for the South Australian Parliament that they will pass this legislation and that we will see a domino effect around our nation as other states follow South Australia. God bless you.